Hello, everyone. I'm Brant James. Welcome to the Hey USA podcast, where this week we will discuss the NCAA tournament and how Charles Oakley, who calls himself the last enforcer, is helping to not only stamp out hunger, but problem gambling. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the Hey USA podcast. I'm going to take Garcia, senior writer Play USA. And with me, as always, Mr. Brant James, lead writer of Play USA. Brant, Sweet 16, how are your brackets looking? They're destroyed because, like a moron, and to create some hashtag content behind a story, I filled out my entire bracket using a quarter, and that quarter sucks. But <laughs> I still have my national champion, so the U. There's no way they're going to win, but I still got my national champion. What about you? I mean, the U's looking pretty, pretty solid. Mine's still, uh, well, mine's like 60%. Obviously, like everyone else is busted with the St. Peter's upset of Kentucky. Um, my, my champion's still alive, Gonzaga. So things are slightly good. They got a gauntlet to run Arkansas and then they face the winner of Texas Tech and Duke. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. Speaking of March Madness, we got some hot news, uh, about sports books here in the state of Illinois. Uh, it was just announced that the DraftKings Sportsbook at Wrigley Field should be complete by the end of the year. There's been a lot of news about the um, city of Chicago passing an ordinance that allows sportsbooks at Chicago stadiums. Right now, the only two that have announced some type of deal are, of course, Wrigley Field with DraftKings and the United Center, home of the Bulls and Blackhawks with Vandal. There isn't a timeline for that one, but, you know, as with anything, that one's moving along forward. There of the other arenas, uh, Guaranteed Rate Field, Wind Trust, Soldier Field, haven't really announced deals. Although Soldier Field has said that they want to build a Rivers at Rivers Sportsbook, but then they went and did the whole Arling, Arlington Racetrack thing, and now they might be moving to the suburbs. So that one's off the table. But for the most part, sportsbooks are coming to the city, and we we'll, should have our first one by the end of the year. Doing some extensive research. Googled it for like two minutes about the Wrigley Field sports book, and they tore something down called like Captain Morgan's Bar building Morgan's or something. Bar, yeah, yeah. But that was that was a popular thing, or people pissed it, about this, or what? No, I, I don't know if they would be pissed about it. It used it, it was just one of those, you know, uh, you buy a voucher, you can get in early, get some free drinks. Yeah, it's up in right field. It wasn't as popular as many people thought. This new sports book, uh, we got a link to a story uh, down in the description. It's going to be three stories. It's going to be the hottest new attraction in the renovated Wrigley Field. Uh, like I said, it's going to be a state-of-the-art draft and sports book, restaurant, bar, the works. The goal, apparently, for the Cubs ownership is to make Wrigley Field now a year-round destination, which over the past two years they have done because they added an oh, uh, ice skating rink in the winter. They have an open courtyard where they can have concerts and movies. They got a jumbotron. They got a hotel. They got wow. a... You know, parking garages galore. So it's going to be pretty uh, nuts once the, the sportsbooks finish. Completely change that area back from its 2012, 2013 years. Um, but yeah, I don't think people that upset that Captain Morgan's gone. Now they can play some sports bets at DraftKings, which is what people want. Yeah. No, I, I remember when the when the Capitals put in, I guess it would have been a William Hill sports book at that yeah, point yeah uh, they replaced a, a, a bar called the green turtle which is a local a local chain sort of institution one of the first places that you sneak in underage and get rip and grow and there was one <laughs> at the at the arena there and i think they, they changed that out to make the sports book i didn't know they were stepping on a little cub paws yeah speaking of other arenas with sports books you could say not necessarily in them but there is capital one arena in dc uh the nationals park will have a sports book across the street adjacent uh what's the stadium in arizona that is getting a state farm state farm that's where yeah. kyler murray that... runs for his life sorry CJ. they are hosting super bowl next year and will have a sports book in that stadium but so far there haven't been very many announcements it's still murky water on if you can build it in or adjacent to or next to or outside of the mm -hmm. stadium. Uh, there is talks of some stuff in New York. Um, we'll, we'll don't really want to get into that right now. We'll save that for another pod, but there's stuff about New York that's sports betting related. But for the most part, it's been kind of quiet on the front of stadiums uh, wanting to build sports books. But they've, they've been trying. That's yeah. stuff they've been act actively uh, going after. 
Yeah, I think the footprint, <clears throat> excuse me, footprint center in Phoenix, home of the Suns, gotcha, um, and the WNBA Mercury, right? Mercury, I think they have a yeah. sports book inside. Yeah. Uh, Arizona is a hotbed for sports betting right now. It's one of the one of the big movers and shakers. Absolutely, they'll make history with that uh, with that sports book in the in adjacent the stadium uh, <laughs> next year. Yeah. Uh, so moving on, we got some stuff to talk about with Charles Oakley. What do we got? Yeah, this was uh, this was interesting. This was this was fun. It is, as we know, we brought this up a few times. Uh, March is a problem gambling awareness month. I had the opportunity to speak with Charles Oakley. You'll remember him as the uh, as an enforcer type, got some fist fights in the in the late eighties or you know in the mid nineties, played nineteen seasons in the NBA. People remember him mostly with the Knicks. He did a little protection work for Michael Jordan when he was with the Bulls and he played with the Cavs uh, a bit. Tough guy. Um, but he upon retiring, he like many athletes opened the foundation, uh, remarkably called the Charles Oakley Foundation. And part of that is hunger outreach. And he has a hunger uh program called Oak Out Hunger that he'd started a couple of years ago. And this month, Entain, uh, heavily involved in the, in the gambling space, sponsored uh, his tour to promote some of the new responsible gambling and responsible finance packages that they're launching. They've got a, a couple stops coming. They've already been in New York, you know, Philadelphia and Tennessee. Uh, the link is below. Check those out. If uh, you or anyone else that you know could benefit from either of those two, we spoke to Charles for quite a bit, talked about the program. Uh, of course, got him to talk a little trash about how he tried to, ch- uh, he tried to goad Sha- Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley into boxing him so far. That's not working. What current players he would pay to see and what are his, what are his thoughts on uh, athletes being allowed to become sports book brand ambassadors? It was a pretty good chat. So, um, we hope you enjoy that. Um, Charles Oakley was a little before my time, but I would say, you know, being the last enforcer, when we, when we talk about that, it's, it's a very defensive, aggressive, in your face type of player. I would say a player that not, they're not the same guy, obviously, but mm. play style wise, uh, Kevin Garnett kind of reminds me of, of that, you know, yeah. physical in your face, trash talking, you know, plays rough defense. But since those guys, I mean, there's not very many. Maybe a Draymond Green kind of acted that yeah. way a little bit, but there not many athletes are that aggressive anymore on the defensive front. So Absolutely. Um, what was one of the? I mean, you, you, we'll jump into that video here in a sec. But you mentioned the athletes that he would play to see. What What were the ones that he he kind of mentioned on that? Ja, Ja Morant. I mean, he praised him. He was the first name that came up. He said, you know, he yeah. certainly has the hype right now. He, he attends a lot of basketball games. So the question he was able to answer quite easily because he pays to go see a lot of basketball games. <laughs> uh, he'd just seen the Knicks and the, and the Nets play mm-hmm. earlier. Uh, had some interesting comments on uh, KD and, and his philosophy. He, he's not much one of, uh, uh, you know, he doesn't love all the hoisting of the threes. He, yeah. he wants uh, you to get your best five out there, push and shove on each other. And occasionally if your hands turn into fists, well, that's part of the game too. If you, <laughs> if you Google Oakley, you will see many photographs of yeah. him, not so much grabbing for the ball, but grabbing for for throats like the very Cheers. famous one with uh, van gundy i think holding on to alonzo morning's uh, leg that's actually in, in the story so please if anything just click that link so you can see oakley <laughs> causing a riot in a game with the, with the huge ice well without further ado let's play the video so how, how did uh, you you begin how did this project start for you um you know years i've been doing a lot of charity work uh Probably did over different, different, hundred different charities over the last ten years. Um, just doing stuff positive uh, on the community, especially in Cleveland, Chicago, New York, L.A., especially you know Skid Row. But no, this come from the heart, from the family, from generations, from my grandparents and my mom. I should just give back to people in the city where we grew up in. A lot of people didn't have stuff, and once I got into the league. I seen it, you know, at the shoot around, I just walk around to see people just need food, need somebody to, to give them a meal or buy them a hot chocolate, or buy them some tea or something. And I just always do give people 20 or $30. They be sleeping, they wake up, be a surprise of the day. But it's just once I partnered up with my guy, Bo, um, you know, I think that um, the old guy hunger is something that, uh, you know, like All-Star Weekend in Cleveland, we just, we just try to show a lot of love, get back, go to the inner city, 
go back to these cities like uh, we did Cleveland for All Star. We went down to the mission. We could put like 7,500, like 750 people. And our goal is once we go back and cook for certain cities that are on this tour, we're going to go back, be further a basketball court in the neighborhood. We're going to try to put a I don't know, hoop in the park. But, you know, um, I think that, you know, from playing all my years in the NBA, protecting all the legends on the court, I wanted the new generation for this uh, wage of scores in Oklahoma Hungary to be something positive, not just something that we do one time and just leave it alone. And I think that, um, you know, a new generation and social media and all of this, and all of that, uh, you know, I started doing Tic Tac because, uh, you know, the young generation, they lead us in a different way. They bring the energy back to older people. And I think that uh, the way you just score is something real positive we're doing uh, is let kids know uh, it's respons- you can be responsible, you know, because gambling can get out of hand and go different ways and lead to bad things. And we just trying to jump on it. You know, we don't see other outlets doing what we're doing in the, for us trying to get some positive out to the younger generation before they get started because everybody tuned into something has to get old in life. If, if it's going out, hanging out, it's bad no scores, bad no games. And, you know, but the old guy, we, we, we doing all that in one. We trying to educate people. We trying to feed people. We trying to show them that we be responsible. You have to be responsible too. I saw that uh, you've been to New York. I think you have a Philadelphia and a Tennessee coming up. How do you decide where to go? Because I mean, no one needs to tell you there's need everywhere. Well, we know we we know everybody needed. I think right before the uh, the pandemic kicked off, we had did New York, Cleveland, Chicago, Nashville, and um, so we as we go, we add on uh, just some place that we got some connection at. We try to you know keep it keep the keep the bus rolling, keep the tour rolling, and we do add on as we go. I think we go to New Orleans after we leave Philly, Nashville, then Philly. Uh, it's, 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 it's basically where we can, you know, get in touch with someone, they answer back to us, something, you know, like you wash my hand, I wash your hand, but basically it's something that we can get to quick and accommodate them, uh, cause we understand what we're doing for us, like going to these cities and branching out to the, you know, these shelters and in the cities. And, you know, we just trying to get on a, a good page with everybody. You know, we're going to not, not clue, you know, try to cross someone out. We're going to try to hope that one day that we can. In the whole year time, we can do, you know, 30, 40 cities. But right now, we just got to go with who on the team with us right now. Mm-hmm. Certainly, you have more time to do this as a retired athlete. But do you think the current generation does enough? I mean, you mentioned they can have causes and, and they can promote those on social media. But do they do enough to, to give back to the people that you see have a need? Oh, It's just like Ukraine, you know. They want people on the ground. They want people to be there. Some people, you always can get back. You can call and write a check. But I think that when you can go and be in, when people are present, they can see your face, your body language. You can feel what they're going through on a regular basis. I think that's the most important thing. That's what I think that's what we're doing. We're not trying to skip over what we're doing. We're just trying to let you see that we're doing it from the heart. Because we, you know, like I said, somebody can hang on ten thousand dollars, go feed a group of people. No, we're doing the cooking. We're doing it. We're doing it. All the paperwork, we're doing the communication, and we get to hear, hear a lot of these people's stories on hand, you know. So we're getting contents too. So one day maybe we it can be a documentary, it could be a movie that how do we move around to these different cities, engage with so many different people. And you know, we got a lot of like I said, we went to skid, skid Row for the Super Bowl, and you know, that's our third time. So it ain't like we're not going back. We we tell people we come back, you know, our word is like, you know, your, your the best thing is your word. And then when we come back, they be so happy and joyful. So it's, it's a, we bond with them because it ain't like, well, here goes some people that got money, want to use us to do something. But now go there and show them that, give, give them hope, hoping one day that you never know, they're going to be on TV doing an interview. Or we got motivated by the Ways to Score uh, group. Oh, God, hungry. They came and showed love. They sit down 12 hours a day with us for two days and, and showed us that they wanted us to try to be something in life that a person I am just eating a meal whenever they can. No, get some structure. We try to make sure they can get some structure from what we're doing. As somebody who was there on the ground, you know, getting your hands dirty with this, did you see that there was an overlap with, you know, problem gambling or, or money management in general? And, and how did that connection get made with, with Entain to bring these two 
sort of different, maybe not things together. Well, it changes. It's, it's, it's an outlet, you know, so they understand. Uh, uh, we new to the game, but like I said, you know, in life, you have to learn what's going on, know what's going on. So, I, and I think that we all older, so we see people and we see things going on. in so many ways that kids can get strung out on gambling and they don't know, you know, a lot of kids like my grand, my stepson, give me credit card. I, I need to download something for uh, robots. So they don't just download that time. They download 10 times a month. You get your credit card. Like I thought you said just one time. That's three or four thousand dollars out your, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So more of a, this is more of like a detailed control or responsible responsible gambling site that you can go to a wager score if you're having a problem. And it can dilute, it can show you how you can get back on track for a finance. I was reading it in, in the press release. So you've you've always had a background as as a guy that cooks. I mean, you're you're probably, I assume you're not cooking at these large events because it probably it requires a lot of people, but that, that's sort of been something that you've been interested in for a long time. Well, yeah, yeah, that's a good question. No, I'm doing eighty percent uh because I'm we're going to buy the food, we bring it back. I have an assistant, yes, but like when I go to Philly next week, I'm doing all that by myself because it's small. It's about like 120, 130 people. I can do all that by myself. I don't have a problem doing 150, 200. But when we start doing 700, 800, yeah, I probably need about five or six other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I like to be in there and let them, pick, let them see that hard work is never over. Life is hard. You can't just stay because you got money. It's going to be easy. So it's just trying to let them see the 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 step by step every day. You know, it's, it's still stuff to life, no matter where you're at in life. You still got to keep climbing. Mm -hmm. So you collaborate, I, I would guess, with like food kitchens or churches or places that are going to have the setup for you to be able to go in and prepare all this. Oh, yeah, they have to have the setup and uh, they let us know. And we tell them what type of kitchen we need, and the space we need. And uh, we go get the food, Sam Club, Restaurant Depot, some out, you know, that, you know, say like Philly, we could probably go do like say 150 people. So, We'll go we're from New York Thursday. We'll go somewhere and be ready for that Friday morning. We get about five in the morning and get there about, about four thirty. Get about five, you know. Like I said, a small venue, one hundred fifty people. So we'll do breakfast and lunch. So when we go to Nashville from there, it's gonna be a different story. We'll probably be five hundred people uh, for breakfast and maybe another five. So we're gonna do a barbecue. I led right into the next question. I mean, what do you cook? It's different to cook for five as opposed to five hundred to be able to multiply yeah. that up. Uh, yeah, so basically this year, okay, for Super Bowl, we did, like I said, we had 800 people. So I had some assistance because I said, like, we get, when it get real big, we need a couple other people. So things that like we did 12 trays of macaroni and cheese, uh, 10 trays of chili. We did 10 trays, trays of salad. So we had, we had turkey burgers, we had hot dogs, we had chicken. So we had, you know, we had enough food to accommodate everybody. So good thing, I always try to have a size, especially when you get to lunch and dinner, some kind of vegetables. We had string beans. You always want to tell them, you got to eat some vegetables during the course of the day. But like when we do the breakfast, we do French toast, potatoes, regular bacon, uh, turkey bacon, pork bacon. We'll give them an apple cider, you know, like on the tray and uh, probably orange juice or milk. Mm -hmm. As a as a basketball player, you were lucky or not <laughs> to to be to have the fans like right up on you. Yeah, you know, no helmets. They're really close. There's interaction. If the guy in the first row is being an idiot, you can hear it. And in in this, it seems like you really enjoy the interaction of cooking, of spooning stuff up, of looking these people in the eye, and getting that back and forth of if you're connecting and if you're helping. Well, the funny thing about it when it comes to the line and we serve them. And they all got different, you know, thoughts of mind. You know, some people just glad to have it. Thank you, pray to God. Some people want to stop and you know, talk to you. And some people, you know, they, you know, like it's just, it's it's just funny. I mean, it can keep you going. It can keep you like, wow, it's a lot of stuff out here. People need help, really. They, they're talking about this millet, millet health. It's, it's a lot. Of, it's, it's a lot out here. And there's people, you know, like I said, might look like they're good to go. This and that. Two, two blocks later, you might see them talk to themselves, just depressed. So you can get a lot for just being on the line, you know, because we do serve them too, you know. Like I said, 12 hour shift sometime. When you sign up for, I know with me, I like to be there. I don't like to just, like I said, drop some off and keep going. I want them to feel, I want to 
feel their vibe. That's what they want. Because they, I was talking to a lot of people in Skid Row when we first did it about five years ago. They main thing was like, we get a lot of people to drop food off. We never, never see them again. We, I play basketball with them. I have to clean the court off. And I show them that, hey, I'm one of you right now. I'm doing what you're doing. I want, I want you to be happy when I leave here. It's funny. I've noticed this a lot in, in sports, it, it, particularly with, I think, with basketball and hockey. There seems to be a relationship between tough guy, their persona or their job on the court or the ice, and big heart off it like some of the most goon goons in hockey are the guys that are out there like you know pushing brooms making food you know feet on the ground boots on the ground and and doing this what what is the correlation between someone whose job was to go out there and knock heads a little bit but inside it's all soft and gooey in there you know it's, there's a big heart well some people get arrogant and cocky and that's what your sexy players are. Your hard working players never stop working hard. And now I consider that's me. My job is never over. Because I'm I was all about work. I don't want to be in a cute situation. Yeah, it's good to be sometimes, but I feel well, like I said, when I was playing in the league, when I just go walking around the city and seeing these people just don't know where their next meal coming from, just sitting there, asking for a dollar, you know, give them twenty dollars. It's just like that just registered in my head. And especially when I was coaching in Charlotte, I seen it like this lady in the hut. So I guess like every Tuesday and Thursday, they have enough food, maybe like for a hundred people, they'll come until they run out. I see that, you know, just taking notes like, wow, hope one day that I'll be able to just give back, you know, let these people know, seeing a professional guy. It's a lot of people do it, you know, like I said, I've been doing it for many years and for giving my name to like 30, 40, you know, sometimes 15 different charities a year to auction off to raise money, not just for giving back to the inner city, to kids get college, go to, you know, education and stuff like that. So I do that to a lot of, like, you know, found different foundations. And that was my main thing, you know, before we did this Oak Out Hunger. I always did something in Cleveland every year, twice a year, until like last three years. Now we've been on a roll with this, you know, since we started Skid Row, we went to Oakland, like I said, um, Chicago, you know, so it's a lot of love in it. You got to love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're you're the uh, another reason I'm glad to talk to you today. Besides Oak Out Hunger, uh, it, it's become and the gambling element of it, it. It's becoming a thing in in pro sports with active team sport athletes becoming brand ambassadors for sports books because there's a there's a hockey player doing it. Baseball players just got the right to do it in their collective bargaining agreement. And I got to think that the NBA guys and the NFL guys are going to want to be able to do that when their collective bargaining agreement comes so up. So when they get a chance to do what? Go to these sites and stuff? They get a chance to say, I'm Charles Oakley. I work for FanDuel and you should. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. A lot, of, a lot of entertainers doing it. Yeah, yeah. But, but for an active yeah. athlete, that's new. Do you worry right. about what's going to get you? this perception because gambling sports betting used to be so taboo but they're right. being allowed to do it what's the what's the slippery slope for a player well the thing about it the nba always you know all the sport all the perfection that we'll never allow gambling to our site and our vision it's all about the dollar everybody mm -hmm. getting paid money it's all about the dollar and um once the nba started sponsoring liquor maybe about five six years ago i knew they go liquor and gambling go together it's just like they said, they've never moved professional team to Vegas. NBA will probably have a team in the next three to five years. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you got hockey, you got football, you probably will definitely get a baseball team. So NBA, you don't want to feel left out. You know, it's the copycat brand, whatever, especially with money involved like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They'll have a team in Vegas soon. Yeah, I, it certainly seems <laughs> going to be the case. But but like you know, pick pick a, a an NBA player. I don't know. We'll call him Bill. I don't know. Whatever. They can say, go, I work for DraftKings. You should go bet on DraftKings. Everybody knows that that guy can't bet on NBA games. But how much, I mean, how much grief is that guy in the front row? I mean, every time they miss a shot or they miss a layup. Oh, yeah. I well, mean, it, it's... Matter of fact, they just called the football player uh, the receiver Calvin, from Calvin Ridley. Really. So I don't know what we, you know, we caution behind that. But when you allow, you know, people to be in this type of conversation, you have no control on the guy 24 hours a day. But I heard he had opened a psych up with his name, but there's a trip and slope, right? For like you said, uh, maybe they had to do more retired players than players who playing, you know? Mm -hmm. So the money dragging, every, pulling everybody in now. You see so many people doing it now. So 
the way we doing it, at least we out here in the community trying to give back in a way and 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 teach people that yeah, you can be responsible, you know, because we all you know, the new generation, that's our that's our future. So if they mess up, we mess up. So we, we want them to be responsible and uh, hopefully that you know, wait till you get twenty one, not before twenty one and start gambling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely all part of it. Uh, you, you've been you've had a newsy week on Google. Did you challenge Shaq and and Barkley to box? Yeah. <laughs> I assume yeah. they said no because you would you would take them both, right? <laughs> well, different different matches. I think so. I like myself. Uh, it's just funny, guys. You know, I just came out with a book, The Last of Force, or so. It's a lot of stuff in this book. I'm, I, you know, it, I'm rousing people up, so I'm re- I'm ready I'm ready for them to say, give me a date and time. I'm telling them I'll be there. <laughs> now it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of fun when you write a book, but it's a lot of good stuff in my book. Though. I ain't like uh, I ain't scared to say the truth. So it's a lot of good stuff in this book. And uh, me and Shaq had words before, and Barkley had words. Me and Barkley had a lot of words. So Bar- Barkley did my first chapter of the book. It's all about Barkley. It should have been about Isaiah. I'm gonna wait the next book to put him in there. <laughs> I'm sure you got enough for a lot of books. <laughs> Who uh, who in the league would you uh, pay to see right now? Or or I mean, do you do you go to games like if if, if blank uh, came to town? If who came to town? Just then, a guy. Or like name a guy that you like. If he came to town, you want to go see him play. You'd pay to see him play. I mean, you got to go with the, John Moran. Got the height right now. Curry, LeBron. Uh, the league is just different now. I mean, most all the players really. I, I don't think they. Tune in like they used to because the dynamic of the game now is so many threes and you don't have to be structured no more to play. You see so much bad stuff happen on the court. And you look at LA team, they got four Hall of Famers and they 10 games under 500. There's no way, no way they should be under 500. Uh, but, you know, we don't have good chemistry stuff that work out. But uh, um, Phoenix is a team that playing real together as a team. I watched them play the other night. They, they, you know, they don't have, they're not talented a lot of team, but they beat a lot of team because they played with structure and they play smart. Everybody stayed for when they game. And then I went to see uh, Sunday, I went to see, I was in New York, but New York played uh, Brooklyn. And, you know, I know Michael Jordan scored a lot sometime back in the day, but it just, when these teams realized that, you know, like Brooklyn only had one score and they let the guy beat them, you know, sometimes you can't stop it. But, but KD just, you know, he's just a special player than Kyrie. I guess when he show up now, he gonna score fifty or sixty. <laughs> so, you know, so that that Brooklyn's a team is a scary team if they get healthy. I don't think I like about Brooklyn. You gotta play your center. I don't like the teams that don't want to play their center thirty minutes or more. They try to match up. Basketball is made to play position by position, and and if you got advantage, let make the other team adjust. Don't you adjust? Mm-hmm. Does does basketball is so much different the way it's coached and strategized and, and just from your day? I mean, does that make you nuts at all, or is it just like evolution? Uh, but at the end of the day, I tell them the ball still got to go through the hoop. I mean, you can change, you can get, you can shoot threes, you can shoot thirty five percent threes every night, and like I said, the ball still got to go in. So just know what you can do and what you can't do. I think Memphis is showing teams that you can grow. As long as you play within your team, Phoenix, same way. Two teams in the last two or three years in jail and two, like, we don't have three three great superstars. We got we got playoffs can play together. You mentioned the Lakers. It just made me think. Have you been watching that winning time uh, thing where they dramatized the, the Showtime Lakers in the 80s? You've been watching any of this? No, I haven't watched that. I heard Magic, Magic behind it, right? No, Magic's got his own thing on Apple. This is the HBO thing where they um, – they, they kind of fictionalize it, so they kind of make it up and fill in some blanks. Really? Yeah. No, I haven't, I haven't saw that. Yeah, Is the Lakers good? aren't into that too much because, like, you know, they're, it's a drama. So it, it may or may not kind of really have happened, and it's a little scary for them sometimes. Like, really? No, I haven't. Um, you know, since the last dance, guy, I had a lot of people at the end of their chair. I mean, it' gonna be be gonna be kind of hard for someone to make a document, a series, or like something. Coming behind the, you know, they said go to, you know, the go to basketball uh, about inner sports unless it's, I know the guy got a, the blood in the in the garden, got a book out. I had a book out. Scotty had a book out, but so tomorrow, like uh, a series of something you watch on, like I said, HBO, Netflix, or HBO. It's gonna be tough, but 
you know, stuff sell, content sellers. I mean, it's something different. People are going to watch it. I mean, they, they want, Caligula had something that nobody ever had. They had Showtime, they had Magic, and in L.A., uh, you had one of the probably greatest owners ever, Mr. Buss. So they're going to get a lot of attention. But then yeah. Magic doing a sit-down like the last end, right? Yeah, he's got. I think his is on Apple. Uh, he's behind it. Yeah. It's out now? I think it's coming out really soon because he's doing a bunch of interviews about it. Oh, okay. Well, you know, Magic like the spotlight, so... <laughs> Uh, well, it's about. I'm, I'm quite sure he's getting a lot of money from this. He, imagine don't do stuff just to be doing it. No, he's in business to do business, and he's right. He'll tell you, you know. So he probably getting some millions. Yeah, twenty. I'm sure. You know, I don't know how many, but he getting some money. No. I don't think he'll do something like that under twenty million dollars. Yeah, that that's a nice number. Uh, I aspire to that number. It, it just you made me think. Like when you see a documentary. Just any one that you happen to be in. Do you ever look back at that footage and just say, "Damn, did I say that then, or did I do that?" I mean, does does memory versus like you watching video, old video of you match up sometimes, or not match up? Um, I think that they got no film. You did it, so I don't want really <laughs> to go back and try this. Like, wow, no, I don't do that. That's when guys, guys, you know, question themselves. I don't really question myself because when I talk, I basically know what I'm saying. And, you know, somebody write it down wrong, that's a different story, but no, nah, I don't tend to go back and look over too much stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, a lot of athletes, they, they retire and they think, oh, what's next? You know, they might they may or may not have money in the bank, depending on how good a job they did with it. But you definitely look like and sound like you got something to do. So that, to me, sounds like you are in a pretty good place because um, – Unfortunately, what you're trying to tackle right now is not going to go away super fast, but it sounds like you got stuff to do and you're pleased to help with it. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, like I said, you got to keep building in life. I mean, you got to put yourself out there to make the see it work. I mean, I know a lot of people write movies, do movies, they do this and that. Like, the strip sound good until you put it together. Then you put it together, you hope the people come out. So my strip ain't together all the way yet, but I'm still working to get it finished. Very cool. Very cool. Are you still coaching that uh, big three team? The Killers yeah, League? Yeah, big three. Well, I'm going to coach one more year. Big okay. three. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. It's a fun league. A lot of guys who play, they get a chance to play a lot. Now they get a chance to show their talent on a half court. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good game. Uh, you know, it's just like I was on Dance with the Star. You go there, you say, okay, I got this. You got to make sure you got to be in shape. You got to be mentally ready because 14 seconds, you know, it ain't 24 seconds. 14 seconds, you got to get a shot off, da da da. You know, so it's, you know, a lot of kids come out. The good thing about it, they're driving people from five years old to seven years old. So that's a good thing. People come out and supporting it. I think Jeff and Ice Cube doing a great job. I think Kanye West just invested to LL. So they bringing people in and the, to make it successful. So that's another good thing. You're bringing names to the volume. So when people know names involved, and most of the time, all these guys be at the game. So it's just like, I'm almost going to a concert or to an event that somebody you know gonna be besides the uh, guys who play in the game gonna be there. Mm -hmm. Very good, cool, cool. Charles, it was really, really nice talking to you. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll, uh, I want to go check out that book now and uh, keep up yeah. with work. Yeah, yeah. It sounds course. like you guys are doing some great stuff. There you have it, Charles Oakley. As he said, the script is not quite finished, but he's writing some interesting chapters there. That very odd crossover of feeding the hungry and preaching responsible gambling, but as we, we fully agree, two very worthy things. So good for Charles Oakley. Check that out. Yeah, good for him. He did mention uh, some winning time there. Good show. It, it's doing good. good. Show. If you haven't checked out Brant's story on that, watch the, the interview on that. Those, those will be in the link description. Um, yeah, man, good stuff. He, he was a he was a real interesting guy. Uh, yeah. You know, I... I I, I'm as an NBA fan. I my team growing up kind of sucked. I wasn't able to really get into my local team, so I just kind of I was. I appreciated the dynasties. Uh, just really interesting to watch the characters and uh, Oakley and Patrick Ewing and those Knicks. That, that was a real interesting group. And uh, to talk to him, you know, outside of it, outside of the normal Charles Oakley at that point uh, day where he is aggressively chasing a basketball or someone who pissed him off was. <laughs> Cool, and he's doing a good thing, yeah. so good for him, good for Entain, good for the Oakley Foundry. Uh, well, with that, you know, like, follow, subscribe. Uh, Sweet 16 kicks off uh, on Thursday. Follow that, we'll keep you posted on our brackets. Follow us on Twitter. Got any questions? 
uh, shoot us in the comments, let us know. Uh, we'll catch you next week. Thank <laughs> you.